All right. What's up, guys? Thank you to all the new subscribers. Uh, I really appreciate your support, and I really hope that the content that we've been bringing you has been somewhat helpful. So that's all that we want to do is just add value to what you already have. You may be an experienced photographer, or you may just be starting out, but whatever it is, I hope that you're able to find at least one thing out of the videos that we've been bringing you. So thank you again. If you're new to this, please feel free to hit that subscribe button, and we can't wait to bring you more content. All right, so today what we're gonna be talking about is three tips to help you get better lighting when you're shooting portraits outdoors. So of course, for me, I'm a natural light photographer, so utilizing natural light and knowing where to stand is a very important deal for me. If you're a photographer that uses strobes or off-camera lighting, of course, this may not apply to you, but there's still some concepts that most photographers will use, whether they're in studio or they're outdoors. So my first tip is a very simple one, have your subjects back to the sun. So I always start with my subjects back to the sun so that their faces are evenly shaded. Um, this complements the skin a little bit better to me. When you're in the sun, it's so easy to see every single blemish, wrinkle, or whatever it may be. But in the shade, it's much smoother. It's easier to edit in post-processing. I feel like the colors are a lot more vibrant to me. Um, and it just fits with my style. Um, I'm somewhat of a bright and airy photographer, and it's easy for me to achieve that look in post-processing. Also, when you shoot with your subjects facing the sun, it's so much harder to bring down those highlights than it is to bring up the shadows when you're doing the opposite. So that's my first tip. My next tip is also simple, is just to utilize shade. So like we said in the first tip, not only is your subjects back to the sun, but now your background is evenly shaded. So now when you go back to edit in Lightroom, you'll be able to bring even more details and colors out of your photo when not just your subject is evenly shaded, but your background. Another thing to note here is that if you're using trees as shade to try to avoid hot spots. So in the middle of the day, even though you're using trees as shade, there's going to be little spots of light that are coming through the tree. Um, and these might show up on the couple's faces, but you usually be able to fi find a thick part of the tree that casts a good even shadow so that you're not getting hot spots and you'll be able to get nice, soft, even skin tones on your subject. My last tip is to be conscious of the time. Um, you know, I know that if you're shooting a wedding, you might not have as much control over when you take photos, but for the most part, if you make a timeline, if your couple asks you what time they should have the ceremony, or if you're scheduling photos for a client, you can pick the time that offers the best lighting scenario. So when I schedule engagement shoots or any portraits, I always pick about an hour and a half before sunset because this naturally will lead into golden hour where the light is at its softest and it complements the skin tones perfectly. And you're also able to get some of that rim light on the back of your subject because the sun is so low. And so that also lead me into my bonus tip is that when I'm picking locations for my couples, I'm looking for three things even lighting in the foreground, even lighting in the background, and a little bit of rim light to separate my subject from the background. You might not be able to get all three of these things and you'll still get great photos, but these three things are always, to me, what I consider the jackpot. So you'll see in some of the BTS footage that we got in one of our engagement shoots is that I usually try to stand my subject as close as possible to the edge of that shadow. So not only are they shaded in the background, but they're able to get a little bit of rim light because the sun is so low, like we talked about, during golden hour. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. These are just some of the few tips that I use when I'm shooting engagement photos or weddings or portraits. In the upcoming videos, I'll try to dive a little bit deeper into detail um, about these subjects. This is just surface level knowledge, but still I think stuff that's very helpful and good to remind yourself of when you're going out in different locations and doing different photo shoots. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe and we can't wait to bring you more content. Thanks guys.